lectures with the instructor Elia Guindas. We are still in chapter one and now lesson two where we're going to continue uh, with basic AutoCAD 3D techniques and we're going to pick up pretty much where we left off from the previous lesson where we of course learned about uh, how to uh, get in and out of 3D, how to rotate the UCS icon, and how to do a 3D orbit around your design. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, if you recall that box that we drew, it was drawn line by line, which is called a wireframe model. In this lesson, we are going to use the extrude command to create a solid model as opposed to a wireframe model. And then we're going to hide it, and then talk about shading, various versions of shading. And then I'm going to draw three very basic examples to uh, have you practice it as well. All right, let me set up the lesson and get rid of this graphic and point out that we have a new toolbar here called Modeling and another one called UCS. This one really should have been here last lesson, but we neglected it. It just adds an additional way you could do UCS rotations as opposed to typing or uh, the ribbon. Everything else will remain the same. We still got the cascading menus on top, the ribbon of course, the toolbars, and the command line at the bottom. Okay, So I'm going to go into 3D and recreate that rectangle from the previous lesson which I believe was 10 by 6. And there it is. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And as I was saying, we drew it last time by rotating the UCS icon around the x-axis and creating a line that went straight up. Now this was a 3D model, but it was not a solid model, so shading it and hiding it was just not an option. So at this point I'd like to introduce a brand new command called extrude. Extrusion is a method most often used to quickly and easily create solid objects, and as such is perhaps one of the most important commands in 3D. So we're going to give it a try, either the toolbars or typing, either way. You select the profile, hit enter, and then as you move your mouse up and down into the uh, positive and negative territory, you can see that AutoCAD will just pull your shape into a 3D solid. Now you can do this randomly, click again and uh, locate it somewhere, but we're going to actually put in a number. We'll make it 4, and looking at it, we have a 10 by 6 by 4 solid box. Okay. Now, uh, this new extruded box may at first seem quite similar to the previous one you tried doing. That is because wireframe is not just a method of construction, but also a method of presentation. There are some significant differences, however. As I pointed out, this box is a real solid model, not just a collection of wires, which may not be obvious yet, but it will be in just a moment. We can now hide and shade it, which we could not have done before. So at this point, maybe pause and try out the extrude command. We'll be using it quite often. All right, visual styles. Visual styles is an important set of tools that allows you to view your design in a variety of useful ways. We'll take a look at two versions of hide and two distinct versions of shade, realistic and conceptual. The hide command is probably the easiest. You can just type in hide, and as you can see, it does pretty much what you'd expect it to do by getting rid of all the lines that are not visible in a real solid model. Now this particular hide command is not very permanent. You can type in regen, and the lines will come back. Or you can rotate the shape and the lines will come back. So clearly not permanent. However, if you hit this button right here in the Visual Styles toolbar called 3D Hidden Visual Style, same effect with the background of course this time changing to white. And you cannot regen your way out of this one. And also when you rotate around your object, it stays hidden. So the point here is that you can now work on the design with these additional extra lines out of the way. Though keep in mind, if you have a lot of elements, this will slow down the computer and performance because the computer has to regenerate all these shapes without lines visible to you. 
then the only way to go back is to hit this button right here called 2D wireframe and there it is all right that's shade or rather I'm sorry hide go ahead and try that out let's talk about shade there's two types of shading this blue ball right here the realistic visual style and this rust colored ball called conceptual visual style if you just type in shade and hit enter it'll default to the realistic type now even though it says realistic it's not really all that realistic because there's no subtlety in shading here it's just a solid black a little bit of gray and most AutoCAD designers prefer this one the conceptual view conceptual has a little more subtlety of light a little easier to work with and the most important point here is that this is permanent in the sense that you can leave it this way if you were to rotate it'll stay solid and regenerating won't do anything either this is a good thing you want to stay in solid mode like this with shading for the duration of your design you can create other shapes such as this rectangle I'm about to do extrude it again and note that it will stay in shaded mode so you can also change the colors using the change command properties color say red and this is very useful when you have a great many components on your screen and you can use this to this color differentiation to be able to tell them apart so uh, you may never even have to go to wireframe for the rest of your design just stay in shaded mode okay. so go ahead and practice this we covered uh, three new topics extrude hide and shade what I'm going to do now is something I'm going to do occasionally in the beginning of these 3D lessons a little bit less toward the end is I'm going to create uh, a couple of examples and these are taken straight out of my textbook exercises number one two and three and the end of chapter 21 and this will just demonstrate some of the drawing techniques that we just covered the modeling techniques very simple stuff pause after each exercise and try to do it yourself and I will stay in conceptual mode the entire time alright the first thing is going to be a good way to create a wall so you're really going to need this eventually I'm going to create a rectangle that's going to be 120 inches by 5 inches there it is, I'm going to zoom out and then I'm going to extrude it to a height of let's say 72 inches and there it is very very useful for creating walls although of course it's one of several techniques you can use but one of the more common ones to create walls and uh, for 3D floor plans now you can cut out walls and uh, windows rather and doors in this which we'll do at a later lesson alright the second thing I want to show you is the effect of rotating UCS icon first I'm going to create a very basic rectangle and let's say 4 by 3 zoom in on it then I'm going to extrude it a distance of 6 there it is so you know how to do this already what I'm going to do now is use the UCS command whether typing or toolbar and rotate around the x-axis a total of 30 degrees you can see it's moved I'm going to do this again now and rotate around the y-axis now also 30 degrees and now I'm going to try to draw a rectangle note how it's been rotated now I'm going to go ahead and extrude and there it is going to go off at an angle the point here is that you can use UCS rotation to create shapes at different angles right from the get-go very useful technique very simple okay I'm going to erase these and restore the UCS icon using W for world and you can see it's a familiar X Z and Y again one last thing I'm going to show you is essentially the same idea but this time with circles I'm going to create a circle 
and then extrude it out. Okay, and I'm going to rotate the UCS icon around the X axis, this time 90 degrees. Create another circle. Extrude that out. Then repeat it one more time. UCS icon, rotation. Now I believe it's the Y axis this time, 90 degrees. Then create another circle. Extrude that out and it's going now in that direction. So you can see this UCS rotation is extremely important to make shapes go in different directions. All right. So this concludes the basics of the first chapter and you have quite a bit of tools at your disposal. You're able to create basic shapes and we're gonna put it to good use in the next chapter and create something realistic, furniture, floor plans, in 3D and such and you'll be amazed how much you already know. Alright, see you in chapter 2, lesson 1.